this is Sarah Satch at Posh Pooch Designs, and this is our live video chat. And just in case you've never tuned in before, I try to do, I'm going to say try, because there can always be circumstances where we can't, but I do try every Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time to have a live video chat. And we talk about fun yarns and projects and different things that are going on in the crochet world. Good morning, Michelle. Glad to see you. So just to give you a little bit of a recap, my chair is out of sync. And I'm going to tell you, I've got my little Maximo Chihuahua sitting behind my back and he's snoring. So if you can hear him, it's not me snoring. It's him. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Dana. I'm so glad you all are popping in so quickly. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to give you just a short recap of my surgery, and then we're going to get right into some fun stuff, because I've had a lot of questions, and just to answer those questions, um, two weeks ago on Tuesday, I had a, a total thyroid removal uh, due to the uh, possible thyroid cancer, and um, they removed a, a couple lymph nodes and uh, I call it a dissection. I don't know why it kind of sounds creepy, doesn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, the surgery went really well, and I actually went home uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, the surgery was about, I think, about 2.30 in the afternoon, and then I went home that evening by about 9.30, 10 o'clock. And I did really well through the week. I was sore, of course, and I had my grumpy pants on for most of the week. <laughs> my husband took real good care of me and, and family members and friends. But on Saturday morning when I got up, I was extremely swelled. And, you know, when your body is in shock and it's trying to heal, you, you produce a lot of water. Plus, they pump tons of fluids in you. And my body was not releasing that water like it should in my thyroid um, incision here. That's the incision. It started to swell. And what happened is it swelled to the inside, cut off my, my able to breathe good and get oxygen. And so we had to go back to emergency room and they had to do emergency surgery and open that up and clean out, get all the fluid out. And then he put a tube in, that's what that little hole is there, uh, into it, a drain tube, which made me even a worse grumpy pants. <laughs> but that was, I went back and they took it out on Thursday and everything's going good. I'm healing well. I'm adjusting to my medications really well. And so... Um, even though there was a little bit of a snafu, everything is good and everything is, is healing well, you know, and now it's just time to find a new normal. And my pathology report came back that none of the nodules that they removed are cancerous. So that is really great news. And so we just have to kind of wait on the lymph nodes and all that other stuff. But I, you know, you know, those of you who know me, you know, I don't worry about that stuff. I just take it day by day. Uh, I trust the Lord to take care of me, and I got lots of good family members around me and, and friends. And, and so I'm just going to keep on doing what I love to do. And the other thing is, I truly believe that crochet and staying active and what you love to do also helps you heal quicker. That and a good attitude. <laughs> I had to work on the attitude when I was really a grumpy pants. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Let's get into some fun stuff this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now, I have my coffee with me, and I'm using a straw. I told you, I think like last year, when I went to the dentist, my dentist said that if you're a coffee drinker, once your coffee cools enough that you can drink it through a straw, drink it through a straw, because then it passes past your teeth, you know, and doesn't get stains. I do the best I can. I love my coffee, and um, I... I do the whitening stuff and all that stuff too, but just a little tip because I love my coffee. So saying all that, everybody clink in. I got my butterfly cup today. I thought it kind of matched my little collar thing I made. This is just a headband. I made it a little longer. I didn't, uh, my, uh, my pieces of the, whatever these are called, surgical tape are starting to come off. I didn't want them in the way of people going, ooh. so I just thought I'd make a little collar. I kind of like it and then I can wear it for a headband when I'm done. And this is, by the way, just a, my chevron pattern. It's a free pattern on my blog. It's also on YouTube. And I just used the red heart stripes to make it. And the stripes um, started automatically because it's the black with the bright, which is one of my favorites of uh, the red heart super saver uh, brand new stripes yarn. This uh, 
the brights with the black is one of my favorites because I think it just pops right out and I've done several really neat projects with it. Okay, before we get into some new stuff in our crochet along, which I'm so excited about, um, I got a question. Um, I still try to check my email from time to time and I had some help with some friends in my blogger groups and my crochet groups that uh, kind of took over my Facebook page and kept posting stuff and so that you all still had lots of fun stuff to look at and, and new patterns and things. And so I had like two weeks worth of emails and messages and Ravelry messages and Etsy messages to go through. I think I got through them all. <laughs> So anyway, one of the questions I got was, do you have some tips for new crocheters? And so I've, I kind of jotted, jotted down seven of them, I think. One, two, three, four, five, looks like six. And I jotted down six of them, uh, things that helped me when I was beginning to crochet. And the truth of the matter is, I am not your typical crocheter. I have a whole different philosophy on crochet than most people do. And if you're in the same category as I am, I consider it uh, an artist, and I've talked about this before, that there are two types of crocheters. There's the artist and the technical. Te <laughs> the technical. And the technical crocheter is frustrated if their counts don't always come out right or if their sides aren't exactly perfect and if everything isn't lined up and if they're off by one stitch they can't handle it and they have to fix it immediately and things like that those things are important don't don't misunderstand me <laughs> but I am an artist and I am an artistic I call it artsy fartsy <laughs> hello Linda I am an artsy fartsy type crocheter and what that means is I know how to look at something and make it and I don't have to have the pattern and a lot of times <clears throat> when I design a pattern I design everything I write it out I type it up I try to take as many pictures as I can and then I have testers go through and do all the number work for me and I sort of depend on them to do the math <laughs> artistic our artistic designers cannot do math <laughs> I can do math I hate it and I do it, but uh, I have people that test it and check it and make sure it's right because I do really hate math. And so, yeah, she says, I thought that was called OCD. And it really is. When you're the type of crocheter that is technical, it kind of does tend towards the OCD. And what I want to tell you today is you need to kind of, when it comes to crochet, you need to try to relax and think of it as an art. Because there are lots of things that you can do to fix your mistakes. Okay, so let's get back to these six things. The first thing I really, 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 the number one important thing is learn to read a written pattern. Don't just depend on YouTube videos or other videos or even pictures. Those are helps. They're additional helps. Learn to read a basic written pattern. Learn those techniques, abbreviations. I'm telling you, it will open up a whole world of new and wonderful and more patterns out there. In comp comparison to the amount of patterns that are out there that are just videos or just picture tutorials, there's a lot of great stuff and they're a great resource. I love doing them. I know a lot of people don't care for my style and that's okay. I'm just doing it to have fun. But if you can learn to read a written pattern, it, the whole world of crochet opens up to you. And you don't have to learn all the bits and pieces, just the basics. And remember, when you're learning to read a written pattern, Google is your friend. Because if it says has an abbreviation you don't understand, maybe it says uh, TR, and you don't know what in the world is a TR, Google. In crochet, what is TR? And it'll say it's a triple stitch, sometimes called the treble. I mean, those things will, will help you. Um, and don't be afraid that you're going to make a mistake because if you do, so what? <laughs> Practice with some inexpensive yarn. Make some mistakes. Make some art along the way. And you've learned something. So that's my number one thing that I always try to tell people that the world of crochet will open up to you if you just learn to read a written pattern. 
the second thing is when you're learning to read a written pattern, don't don't try to get an expert or even, you know, a moderate pattern. Go to Ravelry, put in the search bar, beginner crochet patterns. Or if you're in crochet, you don't have to put the word crochet in there because it'll already sort out the knit ones. But just put beginner patterns. And it will bring up tons of brand new and older and years ago. Ravelry is another great resource. You can find tons of beginner patterns and then you can practice and get some inexpensive yarn, maybe some stuff someone's given to you that smells like, I don't know, musty house or something. You don't want to give it to anybody, but you don't want to throw it away or something. Um, <laughs> I love that. I call the mistakes prototypes. Exactly. Some of the weirdest mistakes I've made have turned into some beautiful, beautiful projects. I can remember when I was first start learning to do the crocodile stitch. This is like, I don't know, eight years ago. And I was trying and trying. I thought, this just doesn't make sense. And so I was practicing. And I what I was doing is I was not letting the stitch sit up. I was trying to attach it down on the end because I didn't like it st sitting up. But actually, after you get your rows going, the crocodile stitch lays really pretty. And so I ended up adding it. And so uh, somebody else was doing the same thing. And they said, they just call that the tie-down crocodile stitch. <laughs> Hey, it's a stitch. It works. If you want to do it that way, it's your prerogative. <laughs> so that's the other thing is when you're first beginning, <clears throat> remember, another thing to remember is that an easy pattern and a beginner pattern are not the same. An easy pattern is one step up from a beginner pattern. And like I said, if you go into Ravelry and you search beginner patterns, call me Agnes. Yeah, I was going to ask how to pronounce your name. It looks like a beautiful name, though. Um, but anyway, if um, you put in those beginner patterns and you just practice, 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 learn how to make nice straight even rows, learn how to stitch in a circle, learn, you know, starting with the, the chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. If you can master those five things, you'll end up being able to read any pattern and do just about any stitch because most of the patterns, techniques, and harder stuff are variations of those five things. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Those five things pretty much are what all patterns are variations of. It's just a, a matter of where they put it. You know, like the front post or back post or bottom loop and all those things. Those are placements of where to put those crazy fat or those crazy stitches. And so learning to master those those five easy stitches, another thing happens is it opens up tons of other patterns that you can do. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. We talked about learning the terms. We talked about a written pattern. We talked about don't don't try to crochet above your skill level. And the fourth one we already sort of touched at the beginning and that is just to relax and don't worry if it's not perfect. And there are some things that you can do um, to fit. If you're off by one stitch, don't tear the whole thing out. Alter it so that it lines up. And also, um, if you're over by a stitch, you know, yeah, count your stitches. Definitely learning to count stitches. One of the hardest places to learn to count stitches is in the chain. And one of the things that people do when they're making their initial chain, let's say your pattern says chain 40, a lot of times you begin a little tighter and then as you go, that chain ends up a little bit loose and then you kind of, as you go towards the end, you get a little tighter again and it's not an even chain. And so that's why you think, oh, chain's super easy, but that's why you need to practice your chain because if you can make a nice even chain, then you can begin with a nice even row of say, slip stitches or single crochets or whatever your pattern calls for. And again, it's about practice, not, perf not perfection. And I've said this many times, your, your imperfections can turn into beautiful works of art. Because, like I said again, crochet is art. All right, so we talked about that. And number five is just sort of a repeat of being practice, but take it slow and easy. I think a lot of people learn uh, learn a few stitches and then all of a sudden they're wanting to make these magnificent mandalas or, or magnificent intricate uh, where they have all the different stitches and all these things and they're like, I can't figure it out. And, and yes, a lot of those stitches are the same, but 
you have to practice where you can get where those things are easy for you. It's like any other thing that you do. You can't sit down at the piano after two lessons and play an aria. You can't, you can't pick up your violin and only have learned a few, a few finger placements and expect to play in a symphony. It's the same thing. It's an art. How about painting a picture? Can you just, you know, learn a few ways, a stroke, brush strokes and paint a magnificent masterpiece? You can't. And, and crochet is the same way. You have to practice and you have to have your own way. And that's another thing to remember. Even though we're all crocheting and doing a lot of the same stitches, we all have our own techniques and ways of doing things. And that's why a lot of the technical crocheters think I'm nuts because I don't go by that. I do my own thing. I, like I said, many times on different videos, I'm self-taught from books when I was like 15 or 16 from the library. And what's interesting is a lot of the things I learned back then, they're like reteaching and calling them different names. It's one of the funny ones was the Russian join. I knew how to do that years and years ago. And the book that I had just calls it a join, a crochet join. It's got, it had like a page of different types of joins of how to put your yarn together. And that one was just called the join, you know, and then I didn't know it was called the Russian join. So, and I'm like, what's the Russian join? So I watched a few videos. I'm like, I know how to do that. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, crochet is like any other art. It's constantly moving and changing new stitches, new techniques, new twists and all kinds of things. So just remember that when you're practicing, when you're learning, <coughs> give me two seconds. I do have a little bit of a dry throat. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, let's clink in since I just got a sip of coffee. Did everybody remember to clink in? By the way, I'm drinking um, Dunkin' Donuts coffee today. Got it at Walmart. Okay. <clears throat> the last thing that we need to talk about for new crocheters that is one of your best tools in your toolbox, and you know I'm going to say this, your best tools in your crochet toolbox Besides your yarn and your hook is, who knows? Come on, somebody tell me. Type it in there. What's your best tool that I talk about all the time? Come on, come on. Can you hear it? That's right, Jen. It's your tape measure. Learning to measure everything, your head, your wrist, your arms, your yarn, your thing you're making, taking notes, your tape measure will always be your favorite best friend. It's your, your best tool in your, and I tell everyone, go to Hobby Lobby, Joann's, wherever has these little tiny ones for like a buck 50 or a buck or whatever, and get a bunch of them. I've probably got five or six sitting around here. I have them in every bag. It's totally frustrating to make a hat that says it's going to be 18 inches or something and have it be 28, <laughs> you know, and you put it on and it comes down to here. So it has too many rows this way and too many rows this way. Or someone says, this, this square is going to measure six inches and it measures, you know, four. We all crochet differently. We all have different tensions. And just because we're using the same size hook doesn't mean we're going to get the same gauge. And so you may have to make a gauge swatch. And on your yarns, all of them have a gauge swatch. And it's on the wrapper. And I did a video a couple, uh, probably a year ago, that talks about how to read a yarn label. And I think I'm going to revisit that and maybe do it in sections again because it was really good information. And I actually learned a lot when I was studying all that stuff. So measure, 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 and measure again. It will save you mounds of time from frogging stuff out and mounds of time and mounds of frustration. I hate, hate, hate pulling, or they call it frogging. Rip, 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 rip. I hate doing that. I, you know, I don't hate very many things because that's not my nature. Frogging is one of them. It's too frustrating. So, last and most important is your tape measure. Get them, put them in every single one of your project bags, have them laying everywhere so that you can, anywhere you have hooks sitting, grab that tape measure and measure as you go. Measure your hats, measure your feet, measure anything you're going to make, the body part it's going on, and the item that you're making. Measure, 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 measure. <laughs> All right, so those are some tips for new creation, new crocheters. And the thing is, they're great tips for anybody. And these are things that I try to even remember. So those are our tips. Now, what's going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs? Yesterday, I started the Sprinkle Donuts Pillow Crochet Along. 
and I have three samples. This is the one I made out of the chunky yarn. And this is the Deborah Norville chunky yarn. Let's see. I've got the label over here. Um, I think it's Serenity Sprinkles. Yes. And then I just used a chunky number five on the back. And this is chunky number five. All right. Now this pillow measures about 15 and a half inches. This one measures 16 inches. And this one is done with just two strands of worsted weight number four yarns. And so the neat thing about this pattern and this crochet along is you can choose any yarn that you want. You can do two strands of worsted weight or one strand of chunky. <clears throat> the last one I made is I, I did this one with, let me show you up close because those, those little sprinkles don't show through very good on the camera. But this one is done with I Love This Yarn, two strands from Hobby Lobby, and then I just added a little face just for fun. I had my granddaughter look at it because I thought it looked, she looked, this donut looked a little ornery, but she says it looks happy. So at this one ended up being 16 and a half inches. And so even though I did three donuts, I used the exact same pattern and I used similar yarns. I got three different sizes. And so that's what I'm saying about everything looks different. Now, the, the size of this hook is a 9 millimeter end hook, and that's the one we'll use for the crochet along. Now, I'll, I'll link that. I, that in, I did an introductory video yesterday about what you need to get, and, what you, and, and we're going to start tomorrow with the front side of the donut. And then on Thursday, we're going to do the back side of the donut. And then on Friday, it's all about assembly, stuffing, and decorating. So that's what's going on this week. At posh pooch designs i'm going to go ahead and let you go my my throat's still a little dry from all the nonsense and so i didn't want to keep us too long but i'm so happy that you all stopped in i'm so happy um that you all watch my videos and, and i hope you find them fun and informative so everybody have a great week and i'll see you next week